So the game I'm playing today is called The Catacombs of Solaris Revisited. Now, to clarify, this is not a revisited video because I've never played this game on my channel before. The game itself actually has the word revisited in its title because it's an updated version of the original Catacombs of Solaris, but I'm gonna talk about that in just a bit. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to get super weird today. I mean, I know I typically tend to get very weird in a lot of these videos, just, you know, given the kinds of games that I tend to cover on the channel, but this one is just really out there. So, the only thing that the game's description on Steam says is that the goal of the game is to find your favorite room in the catacombs. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, I really can't describe it to you without actually showing you the game, so I probably should just go and do that. But first of all, some background information on the game itself. This game originally came out in 2016, so it's actually not new. However, this is not the original Catacombs of Solaris that I am playing today, this is the Revisited version. The Revisited edition came out just this year, in February, and I'm not entirely sure what all of the differences are between the two versions of the game, but I believe Catacombs of Solaris Revisited is supposed to contain some brand new features, and it's also supposed to be not as hard on the eyes as the original. A lot of the visual effects that the original was known for have been toned down slightly in this version of the game. I'm assuming that was done in order to make the game more accessible. The Catacombs of Solaris was developed by Ian McLarty, and that's a name that may ring a bell to some of my older viewers, because I have actually covered quite a few of Ian McLarty's games on my channel in the past, the most notable examples being Boson X, Dissembler, and Jump Grid. This game is Ian McLarty's newest release, even though it's technically a re-release of a game he put out like five years ago, but... <laughs> I never heard of it before, and I still wanted to play it regardless. This is not a free game, and I don't know if the original Catacombs of Solaris was released for free either. This game is surprisingly expensive, given what you're about to see here. I think it costs about $13 normally. That's Canadian money, for the record. I think in American money, it's probably closer to like $11 or $12. But yeah, this is a very bizarre game. This is probably the most, like, left-field game that Ian McLean Lordy has ever released, and he originally pitched this as an art game, so I think that should tell you everything you need to know about it. So, this is the title screen right here, it's a pretty bare-bones title screen. As a matter of fact, this game doesn't contain any music or sound effects, so it's just completely devoid of sound altogether. <laughs> But you have a few mutators here, and I'm gonna explain what these mutators are when I get to playing the game. You can also load custom images, that basically means you can replace the game's default textures with your own textures. You have settings, and some of them are self-explanatory, like full screen, always run, which I think you can press left shift to run. Project image at start, I don't know what that actually means. There's also an auto-mutate feature, which basically means that the game enables mutators at completely random intervals on its own. Then there's also the About page right here, created by Ian McLarty. Use WASD or arrow keys or controller left stick to move, hold shift to go faster, mouse or right stick to look, toggle mutators with the 0 to 9 key is, save screenshot with C key or controller Y button, so you can save screenshots in this game. I don't believe the game has a photo mode, though, because, I mean, the game itself itself is technically a photo mode, and then escape key or start button for menu. So, let's actually enter the catacombs here. So, uh, yeah, this doesn't look all that visually appealing, does it? So we can start moving around here a little bit, and you're gonna notice something, uh, very strange begin to happen as I'm looking around. Yeah, as you can see, the textures are kind of just distorting on their own, and now it looks like the maze has suddenly become infinitely long. However, this is merely an optical illusion, because I don't believe the layout of the maze has actually changed at all, although I could be wrong about that. But yeah, this is essentially the entire gimmick of Catacombs of Solaris. So, as you're trying to find your way around this maze, and keep in mind that the maze does not have 
an actual exit, as far as I know. It's basically like you're trapped inside four-dimensional space. Like, you try to go back to the entrance, except the entrance is no longer there, and the maze itself is basically infinitely long, and it's kind of like, essentially looping on itself. I don't know, there's, there's, there is some dimensional transcendence that is occurring within this game. I already have no clue what the hell I'm talking about. Someone from Harvard could probably explain it better for me, but anyway, yeah, so... This game is basically a gigantic optical illusion, so whenever you look around the environment right here, the textures will distort. And as the game's description on Steam states, your overall objective is to just find your favorite room. And that's where I want to talk about the mutators. So, the mutators cause some very interesting things to happen with the game's textures. So, this one mutator right here, I can press the 1 key, and as you can see, the colors in the environment will begin to shift a little bit. Now, the only time that they ever do this is when you're moving around. If you're not constantly moving in the game, or you're not even, like, looking around the environment, the textures will not distort, like, nothing will happen. In order to experience the true beauty of this game, you need to keep constantly moving. So the one key is a very basic mutator, which just kind of shifts the colors around. But it can have some interesting effects on the game itself. Oh my god, dude. I can't even tell if I'm, like, standing on solid ground or if I'm moving up or down. Like, what, what is happening here? Holy crap. So yeah, this just kind of changes the colors around. Yeah, and it is possible to leave this environment altogether. Usually it just, uh... If, if you walk around for long enough, you'll be able to find a turn somewhere in the maze that just leads you back to the, uh, the default textures, I guess you could say. Or the default room. I'm not entirely sure. So then we press the 2 key here, and I'm not entirely sure what the 2 key does, but it does seem to kind of, yeah, kind of blurs the textures and stretches them out. Uh, kind of adds like a, yeah, like a filter effect over the textures, like, uh, like texture filtering of some sort, because I mean, yeah, the game's textures normally don't have any texture filtering of any kind. Oh god, okay, this is making me dizzy now. <laughs> It's like I looked downwards, and then upwards, and then suddenly the floor was on the ceiling. Oh lord. Oh god, okay, yeah, so that number two mutator just kind of, like, stretches the textures out, and it also adds, like, a little filter effect over the textures, kind of like bilinear filtering. Yeah, you know what this reminds me of, actually? This kind of reminds me of a hall of mirrors. That's essentially what this is. It's like a gigantic hall of mirrors where you're just, you're just looking around, there's just mirrors all over the damn place, you're trying to find the exit, everything's just distorting around you. Good god, man. Okay, well, there's just a lot of, like, very colorful squares over this way. Holy crap. See, it's kind of making, like, an infinite hallway effect right here, except when you get close to it, you realize that it's actually a wall. All of these mazes are procedurally generated, as far as I know, and I think the textures technically are as well. So the three key. This causes whatever this effect is called to happen. Yeah, it kind of turns everything into, uh, I don't even know. Kind of creates like a little, little, like, crystal effect or something. Kind of crystallizes all the textures. I don't know, that's the best way I can describe it. It also seems to turn everything grayscale as well, which is... Kind of cool. Yeah, and if you want to, you can then combine it with the, the default textures right here, and oh my god. I don't know, I, I guess it kind of looks like glass in a way? You can turn the, the walls into glass, effectively? Oh god. You know, I'm very afraid as to what this video is going to look like when I upload it to YouTube. Oh god, the YouTube bitrate is just going to get, like, pummeled into oblivion. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to uploading this to YouTube at all, because everything's just going to be, like, so... It's just gonna be so staticky, it's just, it's, you're, I don't know if you're, you guys are even gonna be able to see what, what's happening here. Hopefully YouTube bitrate doesn't, uh, get too massacred by this. I don't know, but, uh, there's this 4 mutator, the 4 key. I don't exactly know what to call this one, or I don't know what sort of effect this is supposed to be, but it also changes the colors. Oh, this is also kind of like turning everything into glass, kind of. Yeah, I got like little rectangles and they all they all have like discernible borders on them. Kind of pixelates them as well. Oh my goodness, I don't even know. Oh, this is weird. It's kind of like 2001 a Space Odyssey. We're just warping through space. I think I'm going to disable that for now cuz I'm going to try and find the exit here. Here we go. This 5 mutator, what is this? Oh, I actually do kind of like this one. So this just pixelates everything again. Kind of makes it look like a watercolor painting, almost. 
But there is actually another mutator in this game that makes it actually look like a watercolor painting. Yeah, so this this setting effectively pixelizes all of the textures even more. It's kind of cool though. It's it's pretty neat. Oh my god, yeah, the acid is really kicking in now. There we go. Looks a little a little more artistic. Looks like someone just went absolutely buck wild in MS Paint. That's what this looks like. You can even see that the textures are kind of just like dancing around on the floor right here. It looks pretty neat. Yeah, somebody just splashed paint all over the, the catacombs here. What does the six mutator do? Oh, lo oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, that confused me to no end right there. Okay, so I do believe that the six mutator also switches the colors around. Yeah, it switches like the uh, RGB colors around on the screen. Yeah, it kind of distorts the RGB colors, like it distorts the red, blue, and green channels, and it results in this really odd effect. Yeah, a lot of like very... God, I don't even... I don't even know what... Yeah, just... it just distorts all the colors. It separates all the red, green, and blue color channels, essentially. That's the best way I can describe it. Some of you might know what I'm talking about. What in the world is this texture here? Oh no. Oh god, it's getting even more distorted. <laughs> okay, at least we made it back in one piece. The seven mutator. Oh, I remember this one. So this one just swirls the textures around. You can create some nice looking little swirls with this. Oh no. But as you can see, it looks like the entire cave or the entire maze is just is just spinning around now. Yeah, to make you even more dizzy. It doesn't make it that much harder to see where the walls are, though. You can still pretty clearly make out where the walls are. You can see, like, the individual borders. Doesn't make it that much more difficult to move around in 3D space here. Which is probably a good thing, because then you would never be able to find your way back to the start. Yeah. Okay, what does this 8 key do again? Oh, God. Oh, I rem- Okay, yeah, so... The 8 key just slowly destroys the textures in real time. Well, not in real time, because you need to move around in order for this to happen, but... Yeah. Kinda causes some some, some swirls to form around, some very glitchy swirls to appear on the textures, and yeah, you can see them just forming. Forming on the walls, forming on the ground, the ceiling... You know, this also does kind of remind me of the 3D maze screensaver from Windows 95, but more specifically, it reminds me of the Windows 2000 version of that screensaver. Because the Windows 2000 edition allowed you to add your own custom textures to all the walls of the maze, including the ceiling and the floor. But it also included some brand new default textures that were basically like these psychedelic fractals. And I think I went over that when I played Screensaver Sutterfuge a few months ago, if you remember the double feature I did on that. Yeah, I mean, this... this kind of reminds me quite a bit of 3D Mayas for Windows, actually. God, but it's, it's like, infinitely more bizarre than that, though. Yeah, just textures getting slowly warped and destroyed and just, just maimed and massacred. Oh my goodness, it still looks really pretty, though. Look at that. Just run into the wall and there's, like, a big, big wave of glitchy pixels that just, uh, that kind of form over the wall. What in the world is this? Okay. I thought I found myself in, like, a massive room there for a moment. That looks so weird. I thought the room expanded by, like, like, ten times for a minute. That looked really bizarre. Oh my god, please, this is just melting my brain right now. Okay, I want to show off this other mutator here, or a, a, a couple others. I think I have a couple more. Okay, I want to I wanna try and, and find some normal textures here so I can show this off a, a little bit better. Oh my god, I can't, I can't find them. Where the frig is the exit? Hello? Why can't I seem to find the exit all of a sudden? Where, where are the default textures at? Okay, there you, there you are. There, there you boys are. My, my pretty glitch pixels. Okay, so the Nine Mutator. This one actually causes everything to appear like a water... Well, I don't know. This is not exactly a watercolor painting. I don't know, maybe this other one was actually a watercolor painting. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, but... Yeah, this one also deforms the textures, and yeah, you just... Basically turns all of the walls into an abstract painting. That's effectively what it does. And it looks pretty dang neat. At least I think it does. Yeah, it does also kind of war up the colors a little bit too. Oh, where am I at right now? Where in the name of our Lord and Savior are we at right now? Okay. Yeah, so that just kind of distorts the colors. And then the Zero Mutator, or the one that I can activate with Zero Key, uh, yeah, kind of cuts all of the textures into different cross sections. And, oh, okay, this kind of... Yeah, this could very easily induce induce motion sickness, I think. Induce. 
This could very easily induce motion sickness. It's, it's not not very good. It's not very good. Oh my god, dude, the YouTube bitrate is just gonna be... It's gonna be, like, dead when, when I upload this. You're not gonna be able to see anything here. And I mean, I already can't see a damn thing in this maze anyway. So, I don't know why you would ever want to do this, but if you want, you can actually combine all ten of the mutators together, and you get this. Yeah, that kind of... Oh, wow, that actually looks kind of kind of nice. Yeah, the, the textures look a lot higher quality now all of a sudden. Yeah, so you can combine all ten of the mutators together, and this is the result. Yeah, you you can't even see the maze anymore. I mean, you're just... You're basically just, just swimming through the ether at this point. Or you're just lost to the ether, I should say. Yeah, you've just... You've just completely succumbed to the void at this point. My god, what is even happening? Oh, that looks like a hallway. Oh no, that's a wall. Yeah, so, I mean, if you want... I, I guess another analogy that I can make here is that, uh... Yeah, if you want the game to look a lot more like, uh... A Windows Media Player visualization, like, uh... The Alchemy visualization, specifically... Then, yeah, you have that option. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I think we need to just remove all of that for now. Just remove all of it. Ooh, I kind of like this. Yeah, turn your turn the whole world into an abstract painting. Still looks really nice, I would say. I like I like the the contrast of colors here. Oh my god, dude. It looks like it's there except it's actually a wall. Oh wait, no, it is actually there. Did it like open up all of a sudden? I don't know, but if you just want to make it go absolutely insane, yeah. In order to make the textures distort, you need to actively, like, move the camera around. If you just move the camera around like this, then they will distort on their own. Oh no, I don't know. I don't know what's a wall or a ceiling anymore. Sometimes it just kind of looks like I'm floating. Nine key? Ooh. Okay, there. Stop it like that. I don't know what these... Where are these brown spots coming from? That looks very ugly. <laughs> there we go. Down the infinite hallway. Going down the infinite hallway right here. Okay, what else could I combine here? Seven and eight? Actually, seven and nine. Ooh. Oh, I... Actually, I don't know if these colors look or not. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. It's just been finger-painted on by a bunch of five-year-olds. Okay. Still looks kind of neat. This is a game that just lets you unleash your inner artist. Show off your creativity by basically destroying all of these textures with various mutators and whatnot. God, this this entire game just looks like a massive glitch. It's kind of what this looks like. It kind of looks like broken Nintendo 64 textures. Because I think this is what the textures typically look like when they're, like, corrupted. Like, on a Nintendo 64 game. Like, you know sometimes when you're playing... Or, or you're attempting to play a Nintendo 64 game on an emulator, but sometimes it, it may not have been dumped correctly and there's errors with the textures, and this is typically what the textures look like when they're not able to load correctly, like when you're playing a badly dumped uh, ROM of an N64 game on an emulator. This is pretty much what they sometimes can look like. Oh god, everywhere I move, they just distort. Everything just distorts. Okay, so, uh, colors? Oh my god, dude. That still looks so pretty, though. Oh, I love these colors. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I like it. I like it a lot. Blue? Purple, pink, bisexual pride. <laughs> there we go, representing my bisexual friends here with this blue, blue, purple, and pink color palette. I almost said green for some reason. I'm losing my damn mind. Can't stay in the catacombs of Solaris for too long, otherwise you will actually go insane. <laughs> oh my god, what even is... Let, let's try distorting this again. Hang on a second. I think I need to get to a certain point in the maze before it actually begins distorting. There we go, look at that. Yeah. It's, it's almost like if you want to cause glitches in the game, then you can just press certain, like, number keys and they will just happen. There we go, let's make some nice swirls right here. Oh, look at that. Oh, all the walls are just kind of swirling. Oh, it looks really nice. Okay. God, I don't, I don't, I don't even know anymore. I mean, I don't really know what else to say about this. I mean, this is the entire game, guys, just for the record. There's literally nothing else you can do in this game, just... Mess around with mutators. Okay, here we go. We're entering the portal to, like, the 20th dimension. Whoa, okay, we're actually flying through hyperspace now. Wait, am I even moving? The textures are distorting so freaking much, it doesn't even look like I'm moving at all. But I actually am, because I can see the outlines of the walls. Oh god, that's weird. What did I even make here? This is so cool. Okay, stop it. 
Wait, oh, 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 wait. Sometimes it can be hard to tell which mutators I actually have enabled right now. Uh, that's not the one I'm looking for. What is happening right now? <laughs> okay, I think I stopped it. Did I stop it? I'm pretty sure I did. Okay. Man, uh, alright, so in that case, I should probably- I, I want to show this off, actually. I don't think I'm gonna bother with auto-mutate, because I'm assuming it'll just enable the mutators automatically at random intervals. Okay, so you can add custom images into the game, and I do want to show off what this looks like. Now, I don't have that many, like, funny images to show here, but I could- probably show off one of my thumbnails? I'm not entirely sure, actually. Yeah, I don't know if I ever mentioned this before, but I typically save all of my thumbnails on my hard drive and I never delete them, just in case something were to ever happen to my channel and I'd have to re-upload a bunch of videos. Well, that's why I tend to save all of my- all of my thumbnails. I don't ever delete them. Okay, actually, hang on a second. I just- I just remembered something. I do have a transparent image of Ness's sprite, or one of the sprites of Ness from Earthbound. What does- what does this look like, I wonder? Okay, this is not exactly what I thought it was gonna look like, but, uh, yeah, this is an example of adding your own custom textures into the game. So, uh, are we gonna go and destroy Ness's face now? Uh, I guess we are. Okay, fine. Here we go, then. There we go. Now we've- we've turned the whole maze into a giant wall of flesh. Feast your eyes upon it. I mean, we can also change the colors as well. Oh, okay, I kind of like this green color that's going on right here, this light shade of green. Okay, let's add some swirls to this. There we go, just swirl it around. Maybe destroy the textures a little bit, there, with some, with some glitchy circles. There you go, that's what we turned the entire texture into. One of Ness's sprites from Earthbound, and it's just, it's, it's not even anything anymore. Look at this. It's just green. That's all it is. We turn into an infinite hallway of green. Well, in this, like, this, like, very light green color. Oh, God, is that supposed to be Ness's face? Holy crap, yeah. That's what we turn it into. We turn it into this. And then we can destroy it even further by adding all sorts of different mutators. Yeah, we just, we just transform it into this, and then it just, it, it looks, like, unrecognizable now. There you go. We created... Art. That's- that's what this is, guys. This is art. This is- this is modern art at its finest. Oh, I kind of like this- this texture that's going on here. It's kind of like- it does look a lot like glass. Yeah, it kind of looks like it's- it's shimmering, almost. I don't know, I guess in a way we're also kind of like creating some very beautiful-looking pixel art. Because, I mean, all these textures are made of pixels anyway. They're completely unfiltered. Oh yeah, there's Ness's face again. Yeah, just- just keep in mind. That right there that we just saw, that's- that's what we turned it into, and this is what we started with. Just for- just for a comparison. Okay, what- what else could we possibly use here? I don't know, Caco Demon from... Doom? Because I think I used this image for my Doom 2 video in particular, like, near the end. Yeah, unfortunately this one's not transparent, but, uh, we're gonna blow it up. Kinda like... Oh god, I don't like the colors on this. Oh god, it's looking even more terrifying now. Turn it into something just unrecognizable. There we go. Swirl it around. Yep, that's what we ended up turning it into. Okay, I kind of like this. I, I like this these colors right here. Uh, oh, oh, okay, that's not what I wanted to enable. God, it almost looks like I'm creating, like, water effects. But this, I mean, this is essentially the watercolor effect that I was talking about before. Oh my god, it's literally a maze that's just made out of water. What in god's name did I create here? Oh, well, there you go. There you go. That's what we turned it into. That's what the Caco Demon looks like now. <laughs> yep. Nothing but a glitch. It's all been turned into a, into a glitch. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. These colors just look just a little bit sickening to me. Oh, God. All right, let's let's get out of here. Uh, okay, what, what, what thing could I put in next? I don't know. Maybe one of my thumbnails? I mean, I don't really have that many good images that I could, I could use here. I mean, this game definitely has, like you know, meme potential for sure, considering you can add your own custom textures, but I don't really have an image of Mario here, but like the closest thing I do have to it is, uh, yeah, my old Super Mario 64 randomizer thumbnail. This is actually one of the thumbnails that I made for one of the videos that I uploaded like two years ago. Uh, yeah, let's destroy Mario's face. Three, two, one. Just melts away. Just totally melts away! Oh my god. Yeah, so, uh, oh my goodness. Okay, yeah. 
This, all, combining all of the mutators all at once is definitely very CPU intensive, but there we go. Mario's face just melts away. That's, that's what we turn it into. This right here is what we started with, and we turned it into that. Oh, we turned it into this. Oh no, an infinite hallway of Mario's now. I don't know if I like it. I don't think I do like it. We, like, turned it into a stereogram. Is, is that what it's called? Like, there's a certain type of optical illusion that I think is called, like, a stereogram, where it almost looks like a bunch of repeating images, but you're supposed to, like, look very closely at it, and there's, like, a hidden image inside of it, or, or whatever the heck. I don't, I don't even know. I am just mesmerized that this game even exists, honestly. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely the weirdest game that Ian McLarty has released so far. It is very strange, and almost unnatural in some way. Yeah, so, uh, oh my goodness. Yeah, I, I don't know what else to say about this. I mean, that's Catacombs of Solaris, guys. I think I am actually just going to end the video here, because that's, that's basically it. That's all I can really say about the game. Yeah, so if you want to, uh, create abstract art, or some beautiful abstract art on these paintings, you just want to kind of, like, redecorate the place here, I guess. Yeah, then... Catacombs of Solaris. Oh, hello, Mr. Wide Boy. Oh, God, that texture is, like, mirrored onto itself in it. <laughs> what happened to his nose? Okay, destroy his eyeballs. There we go, just melt his eyeballs away. Oh, no, what is going on? Oh, okay, that's a lot of... That's a lot of circles this time. What the heck? Oh, yeah, let's just, let's just back up. Kind of looks like the circles are coming towards me. Oh god, there we go. The The maze is getting corrupted. Oh my goodness, okay, that looked really cool. Yeah, so I mean, you can kind of like back up against the wall and you can kind of get a better idea as to what the different visual effects are actually doing to the maze. Yeah, they're, it's, they're just like dancing along the maze right here. Oh god, the entire maze has turned purple. We turned it completely purple. Well, well, huh. Yeah, it's just like... <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what else to say about this. It's... it's beautiful. Probably not gonna be for everyone. I can already tell you that. But it's still pretty damn beautiful. Modern art at its finest. Yeah, so that's all I gotta say about Catacombs of Solaris. That's the entire game. There's not really anything else to go over. I think I showed off all of the mutators already. And I also showed off the ability to add custom images to the game, and yeah, that that's everything. <laughs> Is it the weirdest game I've ever played on my channel? No, definitely not. I've played some far stranger games on my channel in the past. But yeah, definitely one of the more artsy games that Ian McLarty has released. I find it very hard to believe that this was made by the same guy who released Boson X. I find that incredibly difficult to believe, but then again, he's he's worked on a lot of, like, really weird projects as well. And that's not the only project he's worked on, either. There's actually another game from Ian McLarty that I discovered a while back, where it's like... It, it's also like a walking simulator, basically just walking around in a forest. But the interesting thing is that every time you touch a tree, you get sent to an alternate dimension, and I do believe it's another game that relies heavily on procedural generation, so yeah, there's a lot of other like really weird projects from Ian McLarty that I, I would like to cover on my channel eventually, but I won't be doing that right now. I wanted to play this in particular because this is his most recent release, even though, uh, again, it's technically a re-release of a game that he originally put out in 2016, but it's been updated so that it's a little more accessible now, I guess? Because apparently the visual effects used to be a lot more eye-straining in the original Catacombs of Solaris, so if you thought that was insane, well, try playing the original. But yeah, that's all there really is to do. There really is no goal at all. It's just kind of, yeah, make your own abstract art, like apply your own textures to the maze walls and basically destroy it. Destroy it until it starts looking somewhat beautiful, and then take a screenshot of it and share it with your friends online. Okay, I did go back in the game very quickly just to try out the save screenshot feature, and yeah, it did actually save a screenshot, it tells me. Yeah, it saves it directly into pictures, apparently. Alright, I'll definitely go and check that out later, but yeah, so... If you want to purchase Catacombs of Solaris Revisited, the link's in the description, it is available on Steam. It may also be available on itch.io as well, I'll have to go and check. And, yeah, 
I don't know if I would say that this game is worth $13 necessarily. I don't know, that seems a bit pricey, given that there's not an actual objective in the game. I mean, the entire goal is to basically create your own artwork to some degree, but I just wanted to show this off because it looked really freaking bizarre. And you know me, I like really bizarre stuff, because I'm pretty freaking bizarre myself. <laughs> so yeah, go purchase the game, go support Ian McLarty and all of the weird crap that he creates, because there's definitely gonna be more of that to come on my channel in the near future. <laughs> I'm not done showcasing his work just yet. I do want to play that other game he made where, uh, yeah, you can enter pocket dimensions by running into trees. That will come sooner than later. Anyway, that's all for now, so thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video I make. Later.